Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. Gives me great privilege this week to welcome a, a guy who I've actually wanted on this teleconference for several weeks, uh, if not longer. And uh, you know his his schedule is incredibly busy. And the rider he gave me of information I had to provide to him just to do this teleconference was absolutely insane. Uh, let's welcome KM. My first question off the bat, KM. You insisted green M&Ms strictly provided to you for this teleconference. What's up with strictly, that? Strictly. Strictly. <clears throat> that was a deal breaker. Green. Green is one of my favorite colors. It's the color of money. Strictly green M&Ms, any other color, this would have been a deal breaker. I wouldn't be on this call right now. Well, of course, I, I appreciate it. It was not uh, not the easiest to have to pick out all the other ones, but for you, the world. How's it going for you, KM? Uh, no complaints. I just left the gym. I mean, it's well documented on the internet. I had a little knee surgery. I uh, doing a little rehab. i uh, be good to go before I know it. So just, uh, you know, keep on trucking. I'm like Superman. They can't, no one could break me, not even surgery. What, what's a typical uh, workout for you these days? <clears throat> uh, well, it depends right now. I'm focusing more on, uh, I want to drop some weight, take a little, uh, pressure off the knees and whatnot and, uh, heal up. But, uh, normally, uh, you know, weight training, uh, normal day at the gym, uh, standard uh i don't do anything i'm not into that crossfit lifestyle and stuff i actually am into ddp yoga believe it or not i don't know if uh, my persona would you know scream ddp yoga but yeah i'm actually i've been practicing ddp yoga for now for about seven years so you'd be surprised at what i could do bro let me tell you that stuff's the best <laughs> it's my buddy right there be careful what you say uh, it's my buddy too you know uh, so, so let me ask you, Cam. Lots going on with you in uh, Impact these days. Talk to talk to us about what uh, what you got going. Well, uh, present day, if you guys have been following the show and whatnot, you'll see that I'm um, I'm a diehard mixed martial arts fan. And if I could go in a time machine, I would go back in time and I would train for both professional wrestling and mixed martial arts. Uh, I follow it up and down, in and out, and. Uh, uh, what you see is is real life. Uh, I I mean, it's a dream come true to try to be a part of American top team. And um, I'm familiar with that whole camp and what they do down there and what they stand for. And that's uh, my main goal right now is to, to run with the pack and, you know, to join American top team. I made some noise throughout the last year since I arrived at impact wrestling, since my very first day back in March, uh, March 30th, I believe it was when I made my debut, but present day, uh, I mean, it's time to put a little bit of change and it's time to step it up and what better way to step it up than, to be with a pack of wolves like uh, American Top Team, so that's 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 numero uno for me right now. All righty, well we will open it up for some media questions, but first, uh, as as the media probably knows, uh, January 10th through January 15th, Impact Wrestling will be back in Orlando, Florida, the Impact Zone at Universal Studios. Uh, another round of Impact tapings. Cam, your thoughts about going back to uh, Orlando? Well, uh, Canada was a lot of fun. Uh, believe it or not, in my almost 18 years, March will make 18 years since my first professional wrestling match. I've never actually wrestled in Canada. I've actually never been to Canada, which is kind of funny considering New York is only a seven-hour drive away from uh, Toronto. I've never actually been to Canada, so that was actually fun to go and piss off a bunch of Canadians, and uh, that was that was uh, a treat for me. <clears throat> uh, Orlando's home. Orlando's home to Impact Wrestling. Um, I I love nothing more than going there and uh, seeing all the signs and just really getting under everyone's skin over there. I love the fact how much they hate me over there, and it brings the biggest smile to my face. And uh, it's uh, the best uh, post Christmas present I could ask for to ruin people's lives. <laughs> All righty. Well, one final question from me before we move on to the media questions. Um, as the media no doubt is aware, we uh, we launched a VIP package for the Orlando area. It's uh, uh, three days. You can find out all the information on impactwrestling.com. But one of the big aspects of this VIP package is miniature golf with the superstars of Impact Wrestling. Now, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, I've heard that KM is actually an award-winning miniature golfer. Is, can you confirm and can you tell us anything about that? Oh, absolutely. Uh I just, uh, what's it called? Before I worked out at the gym, I just uh, did a couple of rounds of miniature golf and stuff like that. I love uh, going in there, you know, 
just uh, destroying everybody and making them cry and stuff like that. I look forward to doing that with the Impact fans and stuff. You know, they're all excited. They buy the VIP pack. They're like, I get to play miniature golf with the superstars. And then they go against me. And you know, most people will probably, you know, let the little kitties win, bring a smile to their face. I actually take joy in watch- and destroying them so badly. They get really upset about it. And then, uh, you know, kind of like the Grinch that stole miniature golf from them. But I'm looking very forward to uh, do this little uh, miniature golf uh, uh, post, whatever, post, whatever, you know what I mean. VIP anyway. package. VIP package. Can't, I can't say I'm surprised to hear that you want to uh, beat a little kid in miniature golf, but uh, that's how it goes. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. There's no kids, I don't, seniors, I don't everything against, in between. Yeah, I don't, I don't discriminate against age when it comes to miniature golf. I take it very seriously. All righty. Well, that said, we will open up to the media for some questions for KM. Um, as usual, I ask that... Uh, Unmuted yourself and your media outlet and we will uh get everybody some questions for km q and a session has started to ask your question please press star six if you'd like to ask a question your request has been received you may now ask your question hello km this is big ray for one wrestling.com first and foremost thank you for joining us today sir Oh, thank you for having me. We appreciate your time. I wanted to talk about your the maturation process from Kevin Matthews to KM. You've been in, you've been in the business since wow, two thousand. It's a long time, sir, and you're still a young man. So, just can you give us a walkthrough of, you know, what what took you from Kevin Matthews, that person, to who you are right now in the business as KM? Well, anyone that's followed my career <clears throat> as uh, Kevin Matthews, my actual shoot name is Kevin Matthew McDonald so growing up um, as Kevin McDonald everyone called me KM and then when I adopted my middle name as my last name for my wrestling persona just went as Kevin Matthews all the wrestling personalities would call me KM so I've always been KM since day one literally since I was in first grade kindergarten people have been calling me KM but <clears throat> uh, but to go what you see is what you get uh, people don't realize that they think that for the most part this is a character and whatnot and I've said it multiple times. Uh, I was a nightmare of a student. I was in a multitude of fights, suspended, kicked out of school, left back. I was a disaster of a kid growing up. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, what you see is what you get with me. I kind of walked to the beat of my own drum. And no matter which, if you want to call me Kevin Matthews, you want to call me Kevin McDonald, or just abbreviate and call me KM. It's the same exact person, no matter what. Um, If I came out, you know, smiling, kissing babies, high-fiving, hugging, that's that's a character. That's not me. What you see is what you like. Where I come out and I kind of speak my mind and do what I want. That that's always been me. And uh, you could use Google and trace it back as far as you want. It's it's always been me. So uh, yeah, I take uh, a lot of pride in in getting to be who I am and not being told to be somebody else. And, I, and I'm and I'm sure you block a lot of shots in basketball, right? When you're going up against six year olds, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Good and for actually, you. Actually, that was my. That was my sport of choice. I started training in uh, 1999 for professional wrestling, but before that, I always was on a uh, out of school leagues, basketball leagues, and stuff. That was my that was my passion along with uh, professional wrestling. Growing up, I was a big Reggie Miller fan. Which, if you actually think about it, I'm a Brooklyn, New Yorker, and if you follow basketball, Reggie Miller was the Nick Killer, and so I guess I always had that kind of you know heel persona to me. Where even though in New York, this guy's getting booed out of the building in the car. I was like, wow, that guy's so awesome. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Muted. Hi there, KM. It's Sam um, at the Impact Lounge in uh, Scotland here. How are you this evening? I'm fantastic. How are you? Brilliant. Really good, thanks. Uh, I just really wanted to follow on from the last question, if I can, and uh, just uh, the creative uh, progress of your character. Obviously, now uh, it's all about showing off what you can do to America's top team. But where did that idea come from? Was that something that uh, you came up with, or was that something to do with the new creative team gave you that ball to run with? Uh, uh, it's obviously it's uh, creative proposed it, and I jumped at it because um, because literally my it stems off of my legit real love. I mean, you could ask me a million and one MMA questions right now, and I could talk to you for fifty hours about MMA. And I have a lot of knowledge about it and stuff like that. I follow it in and out, and I have for about I don't know, 12, 13 years. Um, so they know I'm a diehard MMA guy, and 
So they're like, well, let's, uh, let's go real life stuff. You know, Cam in the real world would love to be a part of American top team. Let's, uh, let's just roll the cameras and see where that goes. And it's, uh, it's based off of a, a bit of a real life situation. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge MMA fan. And I'm a big fan of a lot of guys as American top team. And even when I go down to Fort Lauderdale and stuff, I, I plan on, they keep inviting me over. I keep, I plan on going down to Coconut Creek, Florida, which is right next door. And, um, you know, checking out the school and stuff like that and hanging out with the guys and yeah. So they, they know, they know the real life, uh, KM. So they, they just took a real life storyline and put it on TV. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Ryan Ryder for main event radio. KM, you claim that pound for pound that you're the strongest wrestler on the impact roster. How can that be proven? How can it not be proven? Where's the claim come from? Oh, I mean, it, I mean, can you dispute it? Can you say that that's not truthful? I mean, do we do any kind of test to prove that I'm not? I mean, I'm stating that I am until somebody comes along and proves me otherwise. I think, you know, no one else has claimed anything differently. So I would say, you know, until, until uh, proven otherwise, that my claim stands, at least with me it does. Can we see a competition on a future episode of Impact? Yeah, if I'm... Yeah, if I'm feeling up to it, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't lie. So anything I kind of say is truthful and gospel. And so I, I think, I don't know, I don't really have anything to prove to anybody. So I think, you know, just, just believe what I say and don't question it. Thank you. Sure. Sounds like Ryan's calling you a liar. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Right. So I, don't, I don't know if I am. I just, I want to see proof of it. <laughs> nah, don't worry. Just trust me. I don't lie. It's, it, 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 we did the competition, but it just wasn't filmed, and it's, it's pretty wild, yeah. So I beat out so, EC3. And so why don't you Drake do another competition and, and film it this time? Nah, no, no, no. We don't want to waste any more of the footage. They need it for TV and stuff like that, so we're good. <laughs> footage costs money, you know? <laughs> do you wanna, right, so uh, I guess the claim stands, pound for pound, the strongest wrestler on the Impact roster and, and goes, until it can be proven otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ross was there. He saw it. I mean, it, it happened. Just trust me, it happened. Hey, KM, this is Graham Matthews, Inmo.com. Uh, there's been a lot of comparisons between the KM character on Impact and they from Back to the Future. Now, being a big Back to the Future fan myself, I would just like to ask, is there any hint of inspiration there, or is that just completely a coincidence? I mean, when I mean, I'm not going to pretend I don't. I haven't seen Back to the Future. Ah, Back to the Future, of course I have. But uh, when you look at a guy like Biff, though, I mean, am I trying to be Biff? No, but to me, when I look at him, I don't necessarily see a bully I see, like I said earlier, a guy that walks to the beat of his own drum, speaks his mind, does what he wants, um, like d- isn't isn't told how he can act, how he can walk, how he can talk, nothing. I mean, so in a way, I I mean, you kind of almost got to look up to a guy like that, you know, instead of the, the average puppet that's being controlled by other people and and being told. I don't, I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I've always been my own individual growing up, and never listening to any kind of authority and doing what I wanted. I mean, if people want to make the comparison, hey, go ahead. I think I think Biff's a pretty cool dude, if you ask me. I mean, we both wear leather jackets. I mean, I mean we're both uh, pretty stylish, you know. I, I like the guy. I personally, I personally look up to him. If you want to be Marty McFly, hey, rock on, go for it all day long. If you want to be that guy getting picked on? I'd rather be the other guy. Hi, KM. It's uh, Adam from uh, the Impact Lounge again. Um, yeah, I just obviously you've been uh, around the business since 2001, as you said, but uh, obviously with John from Interesting. 99, is it? Sorry. Um, obviously, your big break now on national TV on, on Impact. Um, when we look back over the years at where stars have been created, do you think you will be seen as the next kind of Impact homegrown talent? Um, considering I haven't had any real substantial like television exposure prior to this, I mean, I've been all over the place. Uh, I worked for pretty much every major company, uh, stateside. Um, but this is my first, I guess if you want to say first, uh, national television exposure or break or whatever you want to call it. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking at it like, Hey, uh, impact's going to make me a star. I'm kind of looking at it like, Hey, I'm going to take impact to the next level, you know, <laughs> like, uh, 
Not not I'm relying on them. I'm kind of thinking more along the lines of they're relying on me. Uh, you get sponsors right from in ring pop. Uh, mine's a two part question, KM. Um, at the moment, you're coming back into it. You're coming in the same part that you've been shown on international stage. Do you think in like Premier like two to three years, you could be like the fra- a franchise player of the um, Impact Wrestling like EC3 was? And also as well, what's you hoping for next year for um, KM? Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to ever compare myself to any individual. And I know you're not saying you're not necessarily saying, do I want to be EC3? EC3 has done in the short amount of time. He's been here a couple of years. I mean, he went from coming in as an unknown to being a household name and he's done fantastic for himself. He's, uh, I think, I think he's all around and pretty tremendous. Um, especially considering what he's done in the short amount of time. Uh, I kind of want to pave my own way, carve my own path. I don't want to necessarily follow the footsteps of, uh, anyone else. And I, again, I know you're not saying, do I want to be EC3? You're just saying, like the position he's in and whatnot. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm always a day-to-day kind of guy. Like that's how I live my life. I don't, I don't, I don't do. Hey, one year from now, I want to do this. Two years from now, I always say like, Hey, today I want to do this. The next day, Hey, today I want to do this. Like that's how I always live my life. So uh, even when I'm at the tapings, it's it's day by day with me. And uh, uh, I, yeah, I mean, thinking of it now, I mean, I'm I, I plan on 100. percent I mean, for lack of a better word, I plan on making an impact and. Uh, you know, getting my name bigger, 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 along with the company getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what in a few years from now, I mean, if I'm the top dog, hey, fantastic. I mean, like I said, I'm never going to change who I am and I'm never going to stray away from uh, walking to the beat of my own drum and stuff like that. And, I mean, if that takes me to the very tippy top of the company, and uh, then, hey, so be it. I mean, I, do I plan on winning championship gold? Of course. Of course. I don't plan on be- being second fiddle to anybody. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think in the, I've, I've, I debuted March 30th. I think in the short time I've been with the company, uh, I've done a pretty good job of getting my name out there. And, um, I mean, this is just the beginning. Like now what you're seeing on TV is, is really the, the start of KM kind of, you know, going full steam ahead and we're going to start doing things my way. And, you know, there's going to be a, a trail of bodies, <laughs> uh, you know, in the wake of it all so yep i'm uh i'm excited for the future and so should you be. thank you very much you're welcome hi km uh david dunn here with the new zealand pro wrestling informer uh when you first came to impact wrestling it was as sienna's cousin just wondering what's your assessment of sienna and uh where she fits currently in the knockouts division i mean i think she's at the top of it i mean uh if you look at everything she's done I mean, uh, she was a dominant champion. She's literally defeated every single knockout they've had. I mean, there's no, you can't, you can't take away, you can't discredit everything, anything she's done. She's, she's at the top of the heap. And I I wouldn't be surprised, you know, in a very short time, if she regains that championship, I wouldn't be surprised when it's all said and done, if she's, if she held that title more times than any previous knockout and is in the, you know, impact wrestling hall of fame. And uh, I mean, I, I think, I think for her, it's just starting for for where she's at right now it's literally just starting and i think uh the future is extremely bright for her so i mean she's she's she doesn't she never needed me by her side to be a success uh so i think uh it's just like myself it's just starting i think i don't think she peaked anywhere cl- came close to peaking yet with her last title and i think uh it's literally just the beginning and uh i think people should you know sit back and watch because it's not the end of her, it's literally the start of her career there. Hi, KM. Um, I was looking back over your resume on the net, and I noticed that um, you were trained by Johnny Rods and Bill DeMott. Um, obviously, a lot's been said about Bill DeMott over the last few years. Have you got any experiences that uh, you'd like to share, whether it be positive or negative? I don't have any positive experience with Bill DeMont. Every experience I have with him is 100% negative. Uh, and to set the record straight, um, it says I was trained by Johnny Rods. That's inaccurate. Um, oh, right. Which we'll call it. It's, uh, I, tra- I went to his school in 1999. I was there for a year. And for that entire year, he never came to the ring one time. 
um, and then I left the school. I had I never learned one thing from Johnny Rods. He never taught me one thing. Uh, I wish that could get erased from the internet. If anyone's listening to this and can alter any websites that say that, because that's not true, and I don't want to give people credit uh, where it's not due. But um, yeah, and Bill Demott, when I was with uh, WWE, that's I was with him in developmental a place called Deep South Wrestling in Georgia, and I was very vocal about it and. There's not one positive. It's well documented over the internet. I was the one who spearheaded that. There's not one positive thing I could say about it. Uh, to me, it's so long and water under the bridge now. Uh, but yeah, my experiences were not good. And uh, yeah, and everything that's been said on the internet from all the talents that spoke out is 100 percent true. So I mean, everything the way it should be right now. Good. Well, from a positive point of view, who has been the biggest influence on on your career? Would you say? I mean, as far as wrestling career, I mean, there's it's a lot of people that I met over the years. I mean, do I? I don't necessarily have that one person, that that one mentor, really. I mean, in 2005, I moved down to the Carolinas. I mean, for a couple of years, I was working under off of the Wild Samoan uh, in Pennsylvania, and then after that, I moved down to the Carolinas, and then. Uh, I was learning from a lot of legends like, you know, the Rock and Roll Express and Tracy Smothers and doing shows with these guys and picking their brain and doing seminars, guys like Dr. Tom and all these guys. And uh, I learned as I went uh, learning from these guys and picking their brains and stuff like that. But uh, in deep style wrestling, Dave Taylor, Dave Taylor uh, trained me while I was there. I was learning stuff from Dave Taylor instead of just getting, you know, drilled into the floor and beaten and hurt and, uh, and, um, talk down to and you know uh but dave taylor was was really good and just uh like i said again people over the years and you pick up things as you go and whatnot i mean even today there's there's a lot of people that are training people that shouldn't be training people and um they don't know anything to be able to teach anybody anything so uh you just gotta anyone listening to this that's uh interested in becoming a professional wrestler you gotta do your research pick and choose uh wisely uh, because you're putting your potential career in someone else's hands, and obviously injury is expected, but you don't want to be in the hands of someone that doesn't know what they're doing, and then you know you're going to get hurt. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how that conversation steered towards that direction, but kind of went on a little rant there. But uh, yeah, the original question is, who do I learn? Uh, I mean, like I said, I don't have that one person. I mean, uh, for years DDP has been a mentor for me. Um, I got close with him with the DDP yoga thing and whatnot, and you know, picking his brain about certain things and whatnot, but yeah, so a bunch of people. I can't necessarily credit just one. Thanks. Hello again, it's Franz Reyes from Inmarine Park. Uh, my question is, uh, who's your dream opponent you want to wrestle in 2018? Wait, say, say that. say that one more time. Um, who's your dream opponent that you would like to wrestle in 2018? Is it in Impact Wrestling or is it just anywhere? Both. Uh, in Impact Wrestling, I don't know if I, I I've been in the ring with a uh, a ton of the guys. I mean, the ones that I haven't been in the ring with yet, I've been in the ring with Eli Drake or EC3. Um, haven't been in the ring with Bobby Lashley. Uh, I mean, so those guys. I always wanted to wrestle Grado too. <laughs> I thought that would be funny, uh, even though I did a six-man tag with him, but I always wanted a singles match with Grado. I think that would uh, be a fun match. Um, and, I mean, around the world. Oh, DJ Z, too. I would like to wrestle DJ Z. I think uh, we could have fun in there. Um, outside of the company, I mean, I've already had a match with one of, it's a good friend of mine uh, with Kenny Omega. I mean, just, I mean, I think I said in 2007, this guy was the best wrestler in the world, and no, everyone said, like, who's that guy? Who's that guy? And then fast forward 10 years later, everyone's like, he's the best wrestler in the world. So, yeah. I pre- I'm not Nostradamus or nothing like that, but, yeah, I call that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, guys like him, there's so, many, there's so many good ones out there, man. It really is. Um, so, it's it's hard to say. I mean, as far as, I, I don't know. I kind of, at one point or another, been in the ring with anybody I've ever wanted to really wrestle. So, I don't, there's not there's not that one person left that, uh, I mean, I wish I could have a match with DDP. Just, uh, I think that would be fun. That's never going to happen. Uh, other than that, 
yeah. Okay, thank you very much. KM, how would you do in a, uh, a match against Bro, Bro, DDP? Oh, I thought you were talking about Robbie E for a second. I was going to be like, really? I guess we'll do okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I think I th- I thought he was fantastic when he was active and stuff like that. I think that would be super fun. I did uh, one show a couple of years ago in 2012. Uh, five years ago, or almost six. Geez. Uh, yeah, he we did a little in ring seg over here at uh, Russell Pro, and uh, he hit me with the diamond cutter and stuff like that. But other than that, I mean, just because of my friendship with him, I I thought that would be cool to have a match with him. But you know, ain't gonna happen. Uh, but it's cool. No worries. But again, I don't have that one. I don't have that one guy that I'm like, oh man, my dream is to wrestle this one person. Like, other than fantasy stuff like Bret Hart and you know what I mean, the people that you grew up watching. Hey Cam, this is Graham Matthews, Remote.com again. Uh, speaking of DDP, your thoughts on his WWE Hall of Fame induction earlier this year? I mean, how could you say that's not deserved? You know, I know you didn't say it, but no one could. That's not. It's not like, uh, you know, some of the other ones, like, uh, I don't know, you know, you could kind of go down the list and see who doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not going to really name drop people, but every year there's usually one. But uh, he, he he deserves it, man. He he earned it. He deserves it. And, uh, yeah, and even like, he's so successful to life outside of professional wrestling um, and so instrumental in a lot of people's lives and changing people's lives and saving people's lives. So, I mean, just – I don't know, just if you want to take his wrestling, his, the, his wrestling history and everything he's done and use that to put him in the Hall of Fame or the fact that he's literally saving wrestlers' lives on a daily basis and use that to put him in the Hall of Fame or put them both together and put him in the Hall of Fame, he deserves it 10 times over. So I was, I was very, very, very happy. I was actually down in Orlando when he got inducted and uh, I unfortunately didn't make it. I want to see it, but I, I already – my itinerary and stuff like that already had me coming back before, before I even knew he was announced. I was like, ah, no. So, I mean, timing kind of sucked on that one because had I known, I would have happily uh, tried to make arrangements to watch it live and get inducted. So, yep, but he absolutely deserved it. Super happy for him. And like you had said, not to dream, not name drop anyone, but he's no Coco beware or anyone like that. You know, it's, that's kind of funny because, like, when I was about to start spitting out names, that, that was the first one I flashed in front of my face. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, amongst other people. But, um, yeah, so he did, there's, a, there's, still, there's still a lot of other people that deserve it and stuff like that. Like Owen Hart, I, I, I think it's what his, his wife isn't signing off on allowing him to be in there or something like that. Um, I hope to see him in it. And, uh, I don't think Brian Pillman got in it yet either, right? No, not yet, no. I, I, I was a big, huge, huge, huge Pillman fan growing up ever since his ECW uh, uh, Pissing on the Ring promo. Actually, I became a fan of him as this flying Brian in Fall Ball 95 when it was him and uh, Johnny B. Bad when they went into like a double overtime in the opening match. It was outstanding. And then he went on later on to turn on uh, – I believe he turned on Ric Flair, right? And Arnaz and Spinebuster in the Fall Ball 95. Then he went over to w- ECW, the uh, pissing on the, uh, in the ring and the whole, yeah, the loose cannon began. That was pretty awesome. Great. Thanks, Cam. If you'd like to ask, a qu- your request has been received. Hi, KM. It's Adam uh, from the Impact Lounge. Last one from me, I promise. Um, I was just curious as to, obviously, between the tapings, what kind of communication you have with with impact and uh have you talked to the the new management yet as uh have they had a conference call with the the roster or have they called you directly the new the new management as far as um which individual scott you're and, speaking about uh, scott demore yeah. the, the new uh yes oh yeah 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 I, t- I talked to scott i talked to sanjay um yeah i've known sanjay now for i've been wrestling 18 years i probably know sanjay for around 17 or 16 Sanjay Dutt was, I mean, whenever he did shows up here, he's been, he was crashing at my house since in 2001, you know, <laughs> when we, we were just on the independence and stuff like that. So I've known Sanjay, I've been good friends with him forever. So, uh, yeah, and I'm in constant contact with him. And uh, I didn't know Scott Demore prior to joining Impact Wrestling. So I got to know him very well since, uh, since coming on board and stuff like that. And, yep, I, I, I'm in constant contact with management and whatnot. Uh, so... Yeah, everything's uh, everything's seemingly well. 
I mean, they tolerate me and my uh, behavior, so <laughs> that's uh, that's probably why I lasted as long as I have. But uh, yep. Hey, uh, this is Vijay from Sports Kid in India. My question is, uh, what were your memories of working in India? Did you enjoy the experience? And you also had a lengthy program with Mahavali Shera. So, what's your opinion of him as a professional wrestler? Thank you. Well, going over to India for Impact Wrestling, that was actually my second time there. A uh, couple three years prior to that, uh, I went over there with uh, Sanjay Dutt, Colt Cabana, and Trent Barretta. It was the four of us, and we literally did five shows in five days, just the four of us. We all wrestled each other and did tag matches, and it was it was a four-man roster. Uh, and it was in, in um, Assam, India. We were over in Gohati. So that that's actually my second experience going over to India. And, um, I mean, I have no complaints. Everyone's so nice. I mean, yeah, uh, no complaints going over there. I'd happily do it again, and... Um, it's always an experience, especially considering it's a, uh, the first time I went was over in Assam. This time was in uh, uh, Mumbai. And, I mean, you know, getting to travel and see different places and countries and whatnot is <clears throat> is uh, always cool. Uh, as far as Mahabali Shira, I like Shira. I like him. Even though I slapped him up a couple of times on TV, uh, Shira's a good guy. So uh, I, have nothing, I have nothing but good things to say about Shira. So, and, uh, I mean the position they put me in, can I really complain? They put me, that's a, that's the great place to be. And, you know, you, you they want you to uh, wrestle Shira over in India. So that's a, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's like wrestling Grado in Scotland. So, <laughs> you know, it's uh no complaints there. Um, uh, so all, all positive things to say. So, but uh, I'm saying positive things now. If I mean, uh, whenever I wind up in the ring with Shira, it's, you know, I'm always going to slap him around. So, yeah. Friendship goes out the window when that bell rings. Hey, KM, David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling and former again. Uh, as we come up on the end of 2017, heading into 2018, um, are you a big New Year's resolutions guy? And do you have any New Year's resolutions, whether they be with Impact Wrestling or uh, in your personal life? Well, um, well, I signed a, uh, I signed a two-year contract that runs until March 2019. I mean, if all goes well, I mean, hopefully I'll be with the company for a lot longer than that. But, uh, so, you know, I mean, I would like 2018 to see some gold around KM's waist, whether it's the grand championship or the heavyweight title or, uh, you know, if, if there's a, I mean, that kind of puts you as top dog, right? So if I have to win a belt, in my mind, I'm already top dog. So if I have to win a belt to, prove to the world that I'm top dog, so I guess I guess put that on the old wrestling bucket list for New Year's. I don't think it's good to say your resolution out loud, though, right? Isn't that, isn't that kind of like a curse to do that? Nevertheless, whatever. That's, uh, I guess, for my wrestling bucket list and impact wrestling, you can put that on it for next year. And then from there, I'll just keep checking things off one by one. So, yeah. You may now ask your question. Hey, KM, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. The last question is a perfect segue to this question, speaking about gold around your waist. Now, there is a, a wrestler within Impact Wrestling by the name of Congo Kong that you've been linked to, and we haven't seen him for the last couple of weeks. But let's talk a little bit about Congo Kong, your relationship with him. And, I mean, were there any thoughts, or are there any thoughts, of possibly teaming you two up to be a monster tag team? I mean, who would beat you guys? Well, we, we, uh, we did team. We teamed for, we had several tag matches together. Um, but at this stage, I mean, Congo, I mean, he's kind of, he's kind of a little bit of a, an oddball out. He's not, he doesn't really play well with others. I mean, neither do I, but he's kind of a little bit different. Uh, he kind of, he's better left alone, so to speak, you know, like I'm on one side of the building. He's kind of in the other dark corner by himself and you know it's not someone that i really you know play text tag with so to speak and say hey buddy what's going on you know you get response with like symbols and whatnot it's like okay this is going nowhere quick so it's kind of let that monster kind of do his own deal and he's kind of like i said better left alone and at this stage i i did the tag deal with him uh and uh i think it's time for me to go solo and i kind of like the whole uh running with american top team as my team and um that's that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm looking more forward to that. So.
So that's the, that's that's up. The Grand Championship, the Grand Championship. That's kind of it. Kind of has like an MMA style to it. And since you're a big MMA fan, yep. I mean, I definitely could see that strap around your waist. I mean, who's your next target then? Um, if that's the belt I choose to go after, whoever is currently holding it, or at the time I choose to go after them for it. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but you're right. Yeah. It does have an MMA theme to it and stuff like that. And, uh, and me being a huge MMA fan, I would almost play a game with myself where I wouldn't want to win the scorecards. I would want to finish people within those three rounds. That's what I would do. I would aim to finish every single person within those three rounds. I, I'm not, I don't believe in this split decision or unanimous decision nonsense. I want to finish every single person within three rounds. If I have that belt. It's been a real pleasure, Kevin. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Muted. Hey, man, Bridget from Swotkira again. Um, my question is, so how does it feel to just enter a gym and beat people up? Like you did how last does it feel to Oh, to go into the gym and beat people up? I mean, they want me, they want me to prove myself. I mean, I don't know how else... Uh, American top team would want me to prove myself other than going around and kicking everyone's butts. I mean, so that's, if that's what they want me to do, that's, that's what I'm doing. I mean, I, I, I did it over in Canada. I mean, if they just want me to keep going up to people and showing, I mean, in Canada, I took out three people. I mean, in one shot, I mean, over here, I took out six. I mean, do you want me to take out 12? I mean, I'll, uh, you want me to take out 24? I mean, you, you name it, I'll keep doing it until, you know, they say, Whoa, this guy is legit. Let's, let's, Let's give him a shot, you know? So it is what it is. If you want me to walk into a, a McDonald's and beat up everybody in there, let's do it. You know, I'll do, I'll do what it takes. So it felt great. It felt great. It was easy. Hey, Cam, a uh, follow-up to that, uh, that statement you just made. One of the things you insisted we put in the uh, advisory was that uh, you have a top five list of wrestlers you would like to smack around just because. Yeah. I mean, for starters, four of them are the title holders in Impact Wrestling. You know, every I want to I want to slap up every single champion because, like I said before, uh, those guys are at the top of the heap. Like people look at champions, number one, they're the number one guys, the number one tag team, the number one uh, singles guy, the, the world champion. Like you know, if I could take whoever has whatever belt, if I slap up all them, right? Does that make me the top dog? I mean, whoever I, I have to slap up to become that guy in everyone's eyes. I mean, I'm already that guy in my whole eyes. So, I mean, perception is reality, right? So if, if, you know, whether I have belts or not, if I go around and just take out everybody, you know, every champion there, every top dog there, then that, that doesn't that make me that guy? Doesn't that make me, I got, I got a lot to prove. I'm still, I'm still new. I mean, I've been in the game a long time, but I'm still fresh and brand new as far as impact goes and the fans who have been watching since whatever, 2002, right? So I have a lot to prove. I have to play catch up to a lot of guys in their eyes. And I mean, so yeah, that's a, I don't even, I don't even know if it's a top five. I, I would almost, I would almost say, you know, however many people are on the roster, you know, put them on that list. I mean, or just take the top five guys in the company and put them on that list and one by one one by one, and then uh, I'll prove myself. You'll see. Hey, Cam, again, this is Graham Matthews, Himmo.com. Um, you before mentioned your New Year's, your New Year's Eve plans and New Year's resolutions and stuff like that. Any Christmas plans, or is it just beating people up as usual? <laughs> uh, nah, come on. Christmas is a joyous holiday, man. You can't go around beating people up on Christmas. Come on, what kind of person do you think I am? That's just horrible. Why would you even suggest something like that? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe beat up Santa Claus a little bit, you know? Go to the malls. Go to the mall Santas with all the little kids online and just, you know, just beat the crap out of Santa Claus. You know, that would be good, right? That would be some good footage, huh? Want to see me make about 200 kids cry? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, man, uh, Riju again. Uh, uh, a follow-up to the question I asked. Uh, so, as an MMA fan, who are some of your favorite fighters? And what did you think of the return of John Jones and the uh, controversy surrounding his return? Wait, so you said, uh, who are my favorite fighters in MMA and what do I think about John Jones' controversy? Absolutely, yes. Well, my favorite fighters, I mean, different eras and stuff like that. I mean, growing up, I've always been... Uh, 
I mean, I would say growing up. I mean, whatever, 12, 13 years ago when I started really following it, it's not more. I don't know. It was like late 90, no, early 2000. So like 2002, I started watching it, I think. And then, I mean, obviously, I went back in history before that, but uh, Fedor Emelianenko was always uh, one of my top guys. Um, Alistair Overeem was always one of my top guys. The Diaz brothers before the Conor, way before the Conor McGregor boom, I was a huge Nick Diaz fan and then uh, became a big Nate Diaz fan. Um, I've always been a Diaz guy. Uh, I like I like guys like present day Cub Swanson is exciting. I always like guys like Diego Sanchez. Um, uh, I mean ATT. How could you deny Colby Covington, the number three guy in the division, that's next in line for a title shot, and I think he's going to become the, the welterweight champion. Uh, I've never been a GSP guy because in the welterweight division, I've always been a Nick Diaz guy. I've never. Uh, I, I like. I respect John Jones. I, I always like John Jones. Uh, his fighting style, um, but the controversy surrounding him, it's not good, right? John Jones can't seem to stay out of trouble. Uh, so yeah, he has a, he has a bit of an uphill battle for himself. So, I mean, I mean, even if you take everything away that all of his mess ups away and whatnot, I mean, this is definitely going to tarnish his legacy as the greatest of all time. Cause he keeps destroying everyone that he's failing all these tests and doing all this stupid stuff, and uh, he's his own worst enemy. John Jones is the only fighter that can beat John Jones, and I know that sounds cliche, but that's been proven to be the truth. Every time he comes back, he destroys the top guy, and then he screws himself up. So uh, I hope he gets the stuff together because John Jones is – he's you can't you, you can't be any any better than what John Jones is, and, uh, and he, he's proven it time and time and time again. Even with a year layoff, he'll come back and just annihilate the top guy. So, yeah. Sucks that he's going through what he's going through. I mean, he's exciting to watch. I enjoy watching him. So hopefully he'll be back. And uh, currently, uh, what you call Francis Naganu, um, he's uh, he's one of my favorites. Uh, and it's not because he just knocked out over him. Because if you date back on my Facebook, January of last year, I predicted that he was going to knock out Al- um, Arlovsky that night. Then he's going to fight a top five guy, knock him out, which he just fought over him at number one, knock him out. Then I said, this time next year, he'll fight for the title and he'll beat the champion. And now January 20th, he's getting a title fight. Again, I'm not saying that uh, I'm Nostradamus here, but yeah, I kind of called that a year in advance and exactly the trail that he would take to uh, get a title shot and when he would get a title shot and when he would be champion. But uh if you watch it, pay attention to that guy. Nobody's going to beat that guy. That guy is his nickname is the Predator. He is the Predator. He is literally going to lay a trail of bodies, um, and it's 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 going to be something else. He's going to what Ronda Rousey did, killing everybody in the first round, the first minute. That's this guy, but it ain't arm bars. It's uh, it's knocking people's head off like a video game. And um, the other one that I'm I'm really fond of, uh, Yohan Yan Jacek over in the strawweight division uh, for the females. I think she's. Uh, pretty badass and i predict she's going to win her belt back next year um so yeah there's a, there's a lot of them i mean i could rattle off i mean division uh, each division who i like but yeah and obviously it's a it's a rotating door new guys come in and whatnot and but i've never been on the bandwagon of uh see this is your fault you got me talking about mma of um like the gsps and the anderson silvas and all of these guys like even when anderson silva i was on the chael sonnet bandwagon before i mean he blew up and then I was, I was, I, I was like, wow, I want him to beat Silva. I was never a bandwagon jumper with, oh, I like this guy because you know UFC telling me to like this guy or they're pushing him down my throat. Just, I always kind of pick and choose my own guys. And um, yeah, MMA is a really fun world to follow. So you say, and, and the cat, I it sucks to be a casual fan where they only watch it when McGregor fights or Rousey fights or Lesnar fights. It's uh, to me that kind of sucks because if you follow it really deep. And you follow, I guess you want to call it the storylines or the trash talking back and forth on social media and read the dirt sheets and read what's happening. You get so more excited for any fight and you watch the countdown videos and stuff like that where you're like, oh, man, you're literally sitting on the edge of your seat opposed to not knowing any backstory and just sitting there watching it as a fight. So, I mean, I, I love I love being a fan right now. Well, we have time for just a couple more questions for KM. Hi, KM. David Dunn, New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer here again. Um, that's really cool to hear you being so enthusiastic about MMA. It's uh, great that you're a fan of that and pro wrestling. I, myself, uh, MMA fan as well. How big do you think the crossover audience is for uh, mixed martial arts and pro wrestling? Are they pretty much the same people watching both products? And um, if, if not, should they be? 
They should be, yes. Are they? Absolutely not. No. If you look, if you follow the numbers, um, especially with the pay-per-view buys and stuff like that, the cat, like the, the diehard fans, when you, when I look at a card and the, and I and I go up and down the card, I'm like this card is badass because I know they're exciting fighters and stuff like that. Um, and you, the casual fan looks at that, they're like, I don't know any of these people. I'm not watching this. And then you look at the pay-per-view buys and, you know, 200,000 buys, 300,000 buys, stuff like that. Whereas then, like, you have uh, a Brock Lesnar or a Rousey or this, where that one individual is bringing in all of, like, Connor actually attracts the wrestling fans, and he's smart with it. If you remember, Connor said, I'll beat up every WWE wrestler. And then, like, just like bait, all the WWE wrestlers are tweeting Connor saying, yeah, I'll kick your ass and blah, blah, blah. And they're firing back. It's like, this guy just literally laid a trap out and everyone stepped in it. And now he has, right, it was like a week or two before his, I forget which fight it was. Maybe it was his last fight against Eddie Alvarez. But um, he laid a trap out for all the wrestling fans to watch him fight because he attacked WWE. And all the wrestling fans now are going to watch his fight because everyone you know, fell into his trap. I mean, the guy's a genius. But um, no, the wrestling fans, and, and I vent a lot about that because like when Punk fought and stuff like that, they, they, they'll they watch one fight a year and then they cast their opinion like this is what's going to happen blah 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 and they're like trying to like go head to head with the diehard and they don't know what they're talking about and they sound stupid when they talk and so no I mean pro wrestling fans I think if they followed MMA the way I do and other, other diehards do they, they would really really like it uh, but unfortunately they don't and the numbers show that where, like the, the most exciting cards when, where these guys fight, like fans don't watch it. I mean, I, I'm curious to see what that last pay per view did, where it was it was unbelievable those fights when you had Justin Gaethje and and Eddie Alvarez and, and Overeem and Francis Ngannou and, and these guys, and they, they put on a war. There was that fight on the prelims. I mean, I don't know if you saw it. I forget the names of the guys, but I mean, they had a fight of the year. Like it was unbelievable. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no. I don't think I don't think wrestling fans, for the most part, do watch MMA. They, they just only watch the big fights, and it's unfortunate because usually the best cards are the fights where the casual fans can't name anybody on it. So, yep. Hey man. Uh, so apart from uh, uh, this, like, apart from MMA, you also said you're a big fan of Kenny Omega. Uh, what do you think of Omega versus Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom this year? I think it's I think it's brilliant for business, and uh, what's more, I think it I think it helps out all brands involved. Um, even though everyone says like uh, like they're going at Jericho saying oh WWE this they're pissed they're this they're this like I know it sounds crazy but this actually helps WWE in a way too in a big way. Uh, so it's a crossover without being a crossover. So um, it's 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 great. I'm happy for I'm happy for Kenny Omega. I'm extremely happy for him. He was with me in uh, developmental in 2006. We kind of buddied up with each other. He was at my house every day. We were just playing video games. And, like, we were each other's best friends throughout the, our experience there. And um, and now uh, to see him, you know, what we call excel to this level where, I mean, it, it's kind of wild because I watched him in uh, developmental and everything, he would just, every match he would have, and they would, I mean, they would tell him, uh, you know, tone down your style. Like, you can't do all that. You can't do all that. You can't do all that. Like, they wanted work a hold, work a hold, work a hold. Like, and Omega, now, he. The, this is how Kenny Omega operates. Uh, he needs to be not told what to do because chances are his ideas are better. No, not chances are. 100% his ideas of what he can do and what, what should go where and how to do what are a hundred percent better than anything. Somebody's going to give him. Like he has a very special brain. Uh, and, and, and he'll be the first to tell you he hates pro wrestling. He, 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 he wants to be entertained. He, he doesn't, he doesn't want to watch standard wrestling matches. He does in the ring what he feels entertains himself and thus, and it works because everyone's, you know, in sync with that saying, wow, that's good. He does stupid things. Like he calls himself the cleaner, which is obviously a hitman type nickname, but like fans don't understand it. So he comes out with a broom sometimes acting like an idiot, like sweeping the floor. And so he, like he, he, he humors himself and that's why he's as popular as he is. And I mean, he's a special athlete. Um, he, he needs to, you can't handcuff him. And that's what they did. I witnessed it. That's what they did in developmental. They handcuffed him and uh, 
he, he's just a bird that needs to fly free, man. And you can't tell, don't tell him what to do. Just literally believe in what he wants to do because it's, it's better than anything you could suggest to the guy. And, uh, he's a perfectionist. The guy could wrestle in front of five people and he doesn't, he, there's no such thing as mailing it in for him. It has to be five stars, no matter what. Like he doesn't want any match out there of him. That's not five stars. Even if it's goofy and comedic, it has to be beyond entertaining him and Daniel Bryan, a pro wrestling gorilla. They were thumb wrestling each other in between Bryan's two WWE runs. They were literally thumb wrestling each other in the ring and they turned it into false finishes. It's just insane. The guy, the guy's a genius. Uh, so, as far as him and Jericho, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's going to be, I mean, it's, I mean, even though they step it up big time, especially at Russell Kingdom, I mean, Omega's closing the show. He's not, not going to have, you know, a six star match. That's not in his thought process. It's a hundred percent going to happen. So, I mean, uh, I'm going to watch it. I'll stay up. I'm a hundred percent going to watch that. And I'm super, right, we'll duper go happy to uh, Ryan here for the final question. Hey, Kay, I'm Ryan Bowman from TheGorillaPosition.com. Uh, you paid a lot of dues before you uh, got to Impact. Uh, was there ever a specific match or moment during that journey where you said it just clicked and you said, now I know that I'm going to make it? And uh, thanks for against, your time today. Against Kenny Omega. Yeah. Uh, August 2015 against Kenny Omega where I said, like, I, I went head to head with the best in the world and we went for 20 minutes and I was like, huh, like, that was fun. But it, it was, it was challenging and it was fun and, uh, and exciting. And, uh, but again, uh, I never, I never like at that stage, I was just having fun at like, I, I don't want to say that I came to terms that it was like, Oh, I mean, I'm getting older and no big company is going to be kicking in my door and stuff like that. And, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really expect this to be honest. I was just having fun at this stage, like, because for a little bit, wrestling wasn't fun for me. And then, uh, over in New Jersey, we have, uh, Pat Buck. I help him out with the shows. We run Russell pro. Um, and, um, that we run fun shows and like, that was fun to me. We brought it back like at that, up to that stage, like wrestling stopped being fun. And then we started doing these things over here in Jersey. And I was like, this is fun. We're drawing huge houses and, stuff like that. I was like, this is a lot of fun. And, um, I, I, I was almost content with that. I was like, all right, we run a lot of shows. I get my wrestling fixed and I'm having fun doing it, you know? Um, and then impact impact gave me a call and, um, yeah. Uh, Jeff Jarrett, when he was there, he, he, he gave me a call and, um, he brought me on board back in March and I was like, huh, I didn't expect that, but yeah, let's do it. I mean, it's funny. Cause I, I said, uh, I made a joke. I was like, cause we, Pat Buck has the training school in New Jersey. I help out with too. And, um, and the one on Long Island, I told the kids in New Jersey, I, I said, uh, I forget who I said it to. I was like, at that stage, I was like more focused on, you know, the kids making it and stuff. I was like, yeah, oh, my time is probably passed and whatever. I just have fun with these and, you know, help out the guys and, you know, watch them succeed. And then when the call came, I was like, yo, screw you guys. It's still my time. <laughs> my time's not up yet. So, but, um, yeah, it's, um, uh, uh it's it's been fun. Uh, it's it's unexpected, and I'm gonna make the most of it. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Alrighty, Cam. I appreciate your time very much. Uh, we've hit on a, a truly a variety of topics in and out of the ring. I'll uh, I'll leave it to you for a final thought as we uh, wrap up today's teleconference. Well, uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, thanks for the questions. I enjoyed this. Um, keep watching Impact Wrestling every Thursday, Pop TV from 8 to 10 uh, because, I mean, this the, the career of KM and Impact Wrestling has literally just started uh, and um, it's, we're, we're in for a pretty exciting trip, man. If uh, everything happens the way I'm predicting it in my head, I mean, this is going to be this is going to be cool. This is going to be a lot of fun so you're not going to want to miss this. Thanks for having me, guys. Perfect, Cam. Thank you very much. We'll see you down in Orlando in about a month. And, uh, Media, we will talk to you next week.